Hey guys, how you doing today? It's Steve on the Guru Brew. I've been wanting to take this and turn it into a circuit board. So I started about two weeks ago and I'm trying to learn how to mill my own circuit boards on my CNC router. I've seen other guys doing it and uh, so I thought I'd give it a try. I've learned a lot and I had trouble finding information about this subject to do a good job. So I thought I would go ahead and do some videos of my findings and my failures and my successes and hopefully bring all this information into one playlist for others that may be interested in making their own circuit boards. It's a lot tougher than I thought. There's several reasons for this and we'll discuss them in this video. And in the next video, I plan on starting with designing something, a circuit in EagleCAD, and then um, preparing that, putting it on the cutter, making the part, and then testing and assembling the circuit. So I plan on documenting this in the upcoming weeks. Please keep in mind, I'm not a professional uh, circuit board maker by any means. I'm just an amateur that wants to make some boards and make the nicest board that I can. So if you see something I'm doing that's not quite right, go ahead and jump in there and give me some constructive criticism. I probably won't do things absolutely the way they should be done, but as long as I get a good ending result, I'll be happy. So this is a learning experience for me too. And um, in the end, hopefully we'll have a good document of how someone could build their own. So let's get started. Today's video is the introduction to making circuit boards on your CNC router. Let's get started. Okay, I want to first discuss some of the problems with making circuit boards and why this can be a challenge. The first thing is the tolerances that you have to cut these circuit boards. You know, you're just taking off a little scrap of copper off the top of these boards. And if you're making a really tight board like this one is only two inches square, these are different tries that I've done, different tests. The tolerances are quite tight, and if you are trying to take traces in between other traces using this um, isolation method, it can be a, a real challenge. And if your machine is out just a little bit, say that this board is not sitting on the table absolutely flat, you might skim the right side deeper than the left side, and if you're using a V-bit, something with a point on it, you may go in deeper and wider on one side than the other. And this is a real problem. And the bigger the board, the, the problem's magnified. But small boards also have a challenge of trying to get the traces in between each other really tight. So um, this problem has to be overcome and I think I have a solution to that. Those are the challenges versus doing something in wood where you have slop and you can sand it and that sort of thing. Now keep in mind, I'm going to show you some software here that I've been playing with. Everything that I've chose for the software is freeware if you don't use it for commercial use. I wanted to do this for as low as price as possible. There's four pieces of software in total that we're going to be using. That includes the Mach 3, which isn't free, but if you're if you already have a machine, I'm sure you're already using Mach. The first program is the Eagle PCB software, and the uh, free version allows you to do smaller boards, and I think it's more than you'll probably need. I've just begun using this software, and in two weeks I've been able to make a board and the schematics and get it to work. So my knowledge on using Eagle is limited, but I can get you there at least started. So I will leave links to all these software titles that we're talking about today. So in the next video, we're gonna be getting right into Eagle, drawing up the schematic. I plan on taking you through the entire process of 
making the schematics, making the board, routing it out, soldering and testing. Okay, the second piece of software is called P PCB G code, and that's another free piece of software that we're going to be using. That actually takes our circuit board that we made in Eagle and makes the G code for it. And it's a little challenging to use, but it is free and does a pretty good job, and I think we'll be able to use it. So that's another title. The third title that we're going to be using is called Auto Leveler, and this is really important. Somebody come up with an idea to go ahead and use probing software to probe the board before it's cut and find those discrepancies in the actual machine or the actual thickness of the board and to add or subtract Z travel so that we're perfectly level. And uh, we'll get into more on that later, but uh, like I said, this is just a quick introduction to what we're gonna be doing in the following weeks. So I've decided to use Radio Shack boards. This is easily available and it's two-sided boards. There's one in a pack and they're about $5 each. And the circuit board that we're gonna be doing first is just like two inches square. So I'm able to get six of these on one single sheet. And um, we're gonna be using the back side as a ground plane with some routing on it. There'll be one surface mount component, which will be the um, voltage regulator, and the rest will be all through hole. So we're gonna be using these Radio Shack circuit boards. Now, a big problem for me was finding the bits. Now, I did find the drill bits at uh, Harbor Freight, and here's a little pack of them. I'll put a close-up of it in the corner here, but uh, I think these are great for making the holes in the board. The problem was the etching. Most guys use a V-bit. Let me find a V-bit here. Here's an example of a V-bit, and the reason why you have to use such a odd shape is because it would not be strong enough at the tip if you had, say, a .01 bit mounted in your router. It would snap right off. The problem with using a V-bit is the deeper you go, the wider it goes, so you have to make up for that. and do some testing to find out how deep you can go and how wide it will be. Pretty critical. I had to order some bits from a company online and I got them from China so they're going to take a couple weeks to get here. I'll show you the uh, bits when they come in but uh, we've got plenty to do before we start cutting so um, that'll be one of the last videos before assembly. As far as etching is concerned, I also tried these Dremel bits. And these things are pretty tiny. The tip on them is only 0 .030 inches. But it's st still too big to make the, uh, the board that I want to make. So that's why I had to order the bits. I've been snapping bits off left and right. These things break so easy, and that's another challenge, is the small size. Also, you have to have an adapter. Most people probably have a quarter inch collet on their router, and I do as well, so I had to get one of these little adapters, and this will take your quarter inch collet to a eighth inch uh, bit size. As a test, I also used some dental bits and I asked my dentist if he had any extra bits laying around. Here's one here, very, very, very tiny and I had a custom um, holder made for it but these um, didn't cut it real cleanly. 
So I'm going to rely on those bits that are coming that others have said have worked from China. They only run about two bucks each. So we'll look at those. So that is it for this video. N next time I make a video on this subject, we are going to get into um, Eagle CAD and start designing the board. And I'll show you what I've learned about using the Eagle CAD. My, like I said before, my knowledge is limited on Eagle CAD, but I know enough to make a board and get you started in the right direction. I plan on making a circuit that is based on a at Omega chip, so it'll be a microprocessor controlled project, and that's why we need pretty tight tolerances. So we'll get into that design aspect next time I make a video on this subject. So let me know your ideas and comments, and we'll see you real soon. Thumbs us up. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now. Shadow's ready for the thunderstorm. She can't stand it. It scares her, so we're going to try these earphones out, headphone things. Seems to like them. Shadow, can you hear me? Look, she can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Want some peanut butter? Yeah, she can hear me. <laughs> hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.